Hello, apologies for my absence. It is a crazy part of the semester. Everything is kind of ramping up. I've had projects due and then Thanksgiving break happened. And I had all of these grand plans to film a lot over Thanksgiving break and get so much done, but it went so fast. I've never had to travel that far to be home for the holidays before. And it just went so quickly that I didn't really have time to do everything that I wanted. And I just took a complete break from YouTube and the internet as a whole. I didn't even bring my laptop home. But now I'm coming back with full force because I think I might do Vlogmas, which is a terrible idea. And I know this because um, my I have two weeks left in the semester about. Um, well, I guess now it's only like a week and a half, but things are ending really soon and I don't have tests exactly, so I don't have any like final exams to worry about, but I do have papers that range anywhere between 10 and potentially 50 pages. So I'm gonna be really busy, but that's only the first part of the month. Um, that's only really the first week of Vlogmas. And so I will have a lot of free time for the rest of the month. And I think it'd be a fun challenge to try and do Vlogmas because I have never done it before. And I thought it would be like, you know, a good try. So the week, first week's gonna be the hardest, and that is where I'm most likely to fail and or give up entirely, so I can't make a full promise, but I did think it'd be fun to try. And I have a running list of video ideas that I just keep on my Wonderless app, and there are so many ideas in there that have been there for a long time, and if I only make one video every couple of weeks, I'm never gonna make it all the way through because the only videos I will have time to make are like wrap-ups or maybe reviews. And tags so I wanted to try and catch up on everything kind of clear the cache for the year get all the videos that I've been wanting to make for a long time out into the world and yeah that might mean that I have to edit a little bit less um, I won't have, have as much time to edit and make thing make things as polished as I would like but you know what that's okay I just really wanted to try so without further ado I thought I would share what I hope to read by the end of the year because not only am I gonna try and do vlogmas but I'm also gonna try and read basically more than I've read in any other month this year. Uh, again, because I will have a significant amount of time off, I don't think it's totally impossible. And also, I really want to get to 100 books read this year. I'm at 90 as I talk right now, so I feel like it is possible. So I have a stack here of things that I want to try to get to, to get to that 100. And if I could read more than 100, you know, all the better. Um, yeah, but I decided to do some pre-planning to think about what I want to, to actually try and read this year. So I've got some physical books, you know, always trying to whittle down my TBR, and then I've got audiobooks and eBooks as well. So let's do the eBooks and audiobooks first. Something that I bought to read on the plane that I ended up not reading was The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. And this is not a book that I've really heard talked about on booktube at all, but my sister was talking about it and how scary it was and how much she wanted to keep reading it. And those things intrigued me. We don't always share a book taste, my sister and I, but certain things tend to align. And I know she's a hard person to scare. So if a book was legitimately scaring her, then that piques my interest for sure. And it did get high praise from Tor and NPR. So I feel like those are, you know, good recommendations to go by as well. I kind of wanted to jump into this one blind because it's one that I haven't really heard about on booktube at all. And that rarely happens with a book that I read. Um, rarely do I go into a book knowing truly nothing about it and having no preconceptions going into it really. So I only briefly read the jacket copy and it's something about a family camping out in a secluded cabin and they have no neighbors no no one nearby and a mysterious strangers one day show up at the cabin and things happen i don't want to know more than that it was a kindle daily deal so i ended up buying it on my kindle for i think three dollars so i figured you know it's worth a try the other ebook i want to get to is how to be safe by tom McAllister. another book that i did not hear about on booktube but actually heard about from my mom i was asking for recommendations for things that would be good to read on the plane ride home and this is one that she highly highly recommended and really seems to want other people to read um again i haven't really looked into this too much but it is it does deal with a school shooting and the protagonist is a teacher at the school and she is initially a suspect in the shooting um, I think she's exonerated but it kind of goes from there and I think it and my mom said that it was less about the school shooting and much more about uh, the way that women women are portrayed in the media and the impact that it has on them and it sounded good to me it's worth a try and I think I also this one I have from the library so I won't have it forever but I did want to you know be fair and read a recommendation for my mom and for my sister so 
I got those and I'm really excited to get to them again because I just haven't really heard much about them on booktube. And for audiobooks, I've really gotten behind on my audiobook listening. I typically read one or two audiobooks a month, but I got really behind on podcasts and have been desperately trying to catch up. So I may not get to any audiobooks in the month, but it certainly would help me get to my reading goal. Um, I just got The Book of M from the library by Peng Shepard, and this is one that I have been hearing about all year and have been really, really excited to get to. Um, of course, you know, I don't remember exactly what it was about, but I know it has something to do with uh, a world in which people start to lose their shadows or their shadows disappear. I don't know. I shouldn't explain a book that I don't know anything about. It's a magical realist, maybe even blurring into the edge of fa fantasy. I'm not sure, but um, I've heard fantastic things about it. It was also in the Strands Book Hookup box, and those boxes for me have been kind of hit or miss, but the sci-fi fantasy category has seemed really, really intriguing, and I actually recently switched my subscription from their literary fiction to their SFF, so I'll definitely be sharing that um, when it arrives. I usually do unboxings on my Instagram if you're curious in that, but it's my absolute favorite book subscription box I've ever tried. The stuff they put in there isn't junk that you just want to like throw away or like have to find a place to put. They're actually things that you'd want, like tote bags and mugs and stuff. Um, I don't know. I really like it. Um, obviously not spawned, although I would love to receive that box for free. Um, but anyway, that's all to say. I've just heard a lot about it. Um, I missed the opportunity to get it in a subscription box, and I finally got it on audio, so hopefully it's good on audio. I have no idea, but it's one that I heard so much about that I cannot wait to finally experience it for myself. And then for something completely different, I also have a copy of Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, I use my mom's Audible. She, of course, pre-ordered it, so now I have the opportunity to listen to it. And I really want to because, I mean, 19 hours hanging out with Michelle Obama. Like, I'm so down for that. That sounds great. That's the other audiobook that I'm considering. And I really hope to get to because it is, it does sound fabulous. On to the physical books I want to try and get to. First is the next book that I'm planning on reading, which is I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. This is the fifth and final book on my five star TBR prediction thing that I did um, like over a year ago. It's embarrassing how long it's taken me to get to books that I feel like I'll really enjoy, but I really lost momentum because I ended up DNFing at least two of those books. So they certainly were not five stars and that was a big letdown. So I kind of let this project get away from me, but I want to wrap it up so I can actually talk about the experience of, of picking books and whether or not they met my expectations. And this still could potentially be five stars. So I, I really hope it is. Um, I think this is more of a summer book, but I'm going to read it now. And yeah, really, really eager to get to this one. This one's definitely happening. I also really want to get to the Fairyland books. I actually own the whole series, and I've only ever read the first one, which is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making, and it was delightful. I really, really enjoyed it, but didn't read any of the other ones in the series because I didn't own them. I originally got it from the library, so I bought myself this one with the hopes of rereading it, and I never have. And then last Christmas, so almost a full year ago, my partner got me the rest of the series. So this is the second one, which is The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and read the, Led the Revels There. Um, yeah and I have the other three as well. I don't really think I'll be able to. I mean, I guess I obviously could if I tried hard enough, but I'm probably not going to get to the whole series before year's end. But if I could at least get a little bit further in the series, that would be great, especially because as of December 25th, 2018, I will have had these books for a full year and have not even cracked their spines a little bit to really do that. And these are really fun, fast, escapist. Um, and if I'm struggling to get books finished in time for the new year, I can just read these and I know that they'll be fast. I also have this, which was on my uh, August TBR for Women in Translation Month, and I didn't get to it, but it is Cheese Sweet Home, um, which is a very cute manga series all about a cat who I'm assuming is named Chi, and it just, I don't know, again, seems fun, fast. I got this for Christmas, I think, two or three years ago. It's been an embarrassing amount of time, and I've never even tried to read it, so I feel like I should at least give it a go um, because I know it'll be fun and quick and escapist, and it's in full color, which doesn't happen often with manga, but... Um, makes me want to read, to read it all the more. So there's that one. Definitely in lead up to Christmas, I have purchased Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson, which is 12 stories and 12 feasts for 12 days. Um, I think it'd be really fun to be try and make some of these recipes because I've never experienced a British Christmas before. And I think it'd be fun to make some of these things because like, what even is a mince pie? I don't actually know. But even if I don't end up making any of the recipes, I would really still like to read some of her stories because the only Jeanette Winterson I think I've read is oranges are not the only fruit and that was like six years ago and i've wanted to read more of her stuff ever since especially because i didn't feel like i particularly connected to oranges are not the only fruit but it could have been the class i was taking which wasn't great honestly or it could have just been my my mood or something but you know i thought it was a fine book but it didn't really capture me and i've really really wanted to read 
something else by her since, um, but they've all kind of passed me by. So I figured this Christmas, I'm just gonna actually get to it, especially because it's a really, you know, beautiful book with the foiling um, and it's festive. And I don't usually read things that are festive. So if I'm reading things that are, you know, at all heavy or dark, it'll be nice to dip in and out of this as a little bit of festive escapism. I didn't really think about this before I started, but I'm chosen a lot of comics um, because I also have Boxers and Saints. This is the box set. Boxers and Saints is a duology. One is Boxers and one is Saints. And it takes place on, I think, opposing sides of the Boxer Rebellion. I think this will be great, A, for learning, but also B, I've heard fantastic things about the author. Jean Luen Yang also wrote American Board Chinese, which I've also heard fantastic things about. So all in all, I just think that this will be a really great one to get to. It's also my mom's and uh, I took it 1600 miles away from home, sorry. Uh, so I should also probably return this when I go home for Christmas. And then the last two I picked because they're authors that I've read before and I really, really enjoyed what I've read of them. And I have unread books of theirs on my shelf that I've had for a long time and I haven't read any books by them this year at all. They're both authors that I would eventually like to read their you know entire backlist. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But also it's one of those things where I don't want to binge because I want to spread them out so I have things to look forward to from them. Um, the first being David Mitchell. This is Black Swan Green. This I think is his least magical realist or fantastical book. Um, everyone that I've read of him so far has been relatively whimsical in some way, either in the writing style or in the events. Um, I read Number Nine Dream first, even though that was his second published novel. And then since then, I've been trying to read in publication order. So I went back to his debut, which was Ghostwritten. And then I read Cloud Atlas, which I really, really enjoyed. So next in the order is Black Swan Green. And um, I've had this for quite some time. I even think I tried reading it at one point and I didn't get into it, but I think I was just in the wrong headspace. Um, you know, I've heard mixed things about this. I think it is one of his less well-known books, um, one of his less favored ones. I know that, you know, Cloud Atlas and Slade House and the Bone Clocks are the ones that get referenced the most often, um, but I'm still hoping to really enjoy this so I can move on to some of his more well-known and more recent works. I, I just, I need to read David Mitchell this year, at least one. And then with the other author, I'm not doing publication order. I'm kind of just doing whenever I happen to get one of their books order. Um, and the one that I have right now is Affinity by Sarah Waters. I have read Fingersmith, which I really enjoyed, and The Little Stranger, which I read over a year ago now, and I still think about pretty regularly. Like that book made a serious impact on me. It was so well done. And I want to read everything that she's written because she's beautiful. I honestly don't know what Affinity is about. I've heard Sarah Waters books summarized so many times that this could be one of many and I, I don't remember which one is which. Um, so I'm not gonna try and remind myself now. I'm just gonna go in and hopefully be delighted by it um, because she's so great. I actually really like this, these US designs with the buttery black matte covers. They're the ones that I'm collecting, even though they do get quite fingerprinty. I think that's okay. Um, and I would eventually like to collect them all in this edition. All right, so I know that that is very ambitious and I probably won't read all these things and I'll probably read other things that I did not mention because that's what people do when they make TBRs. I actually had a great conversation with my mom who is an avid booktube watcher uh, over the holiday talking about how I feel like bookish people just really enjoy lists and making lists and being able to assign books to categories because it almost feels like a game trying to find the perfect book for each category. And then it doesn't really matter if you read the books or not. It just was fun to make a list. So it was really fun to make this list and, and think about what I want to read. Hopefully I will read at least a few of these and report back. Um, but yeah, definitely want to get to 100 books this year and these are gonna help me do it. So anyway, Hopefully I'll have time to read if I'm also attempting to do Vlogmas. If there are any video ideas that you'd like me to do for Vlogmas, leave them down in the comments. I basically have a video for every day already planned out, but I'm happy to make adjustments or like add new ideas in the mix. If there are things that you want me to talk about in particular, happy to do it. So um, yeah, let me know if you're doing Vlogmas, if you have tips for Vlogmas, or of course, if you've read any of these books, let me know if you enjoyed them. I hope you did because I want to remain excited about them. Um, but yeah, I'd love to have any encouragement as well but for the end of the semester because seriously, I have an assignment that my professor said could be 50 pages. So uh, yeah, hopefully I survive and I'm able to do Vlogmas. We'll see if I post a video tomorrow. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.